Are you ready for a word? I'm coming out of the book of Galatians, book of Galatians, chapter 5, chapter 5. We have 11, 20 right now, and the pastor gave me the freedom to preach this word, but I promise you I'm not going to be before you long. Amen. Galatians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. He's going to bring it up there. I got to bring my Bible here. You're going to bring the scripture up there. I gave you all uh, a list of scriptures. I got, this is all scripture. What I'm preaching today is all scripture, but I didn't want to... Uh, but I'll get lie you down with all the scriptures. You got majority of them in with you right there laid out. But Galatians chapter 5. And it reads this starting at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, idolatry, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, reveling, all that, you know it's going to lead to death. And such like of thee which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things should not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, mm, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such these is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, if we live in the spirit, if we live in the spirit, let us also what? Walk in the spirit. So I want to preach to you today, walk in the spirit. But the bigger thing is live in the spirit or die in the flesh. Live in the spirit or die in the flesh. Live in the spirit or die on your feet. Now, this death is not a physical death. It's a spiritual death. Because flesh cannot understand spiritual things. So live in the spirit or die on your feet. Bring that scripture up in Psalm 56, verse 13. We'll deal with this one later, but I want to put it out there now. It's up on the screen. This is David. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. When I was preparing this message, Brother George, I was thinking about the walking dead. Now, I'm not into zombies. I never watched the walking dead. Don't have no interest in walking the walking dead. But I thought about this. So my thought is, church, don't be like the walking dead in 2024. Don't be like the walking dead in 2024. Amen? Live in the spirit or die in the flesh. In Galatians, just an overview, in chapter 1, Paul deals with his apostleship. He affirmed who he is. That man didn't teach me, but Jesus Christ himself taught me. In Galatians chapter 2, the eloquent verse in verse 20 said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I, but Christ that lived in me. And now in the life I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of Jesus Christ. In chapter 3, he deal with the Galatians. He said, oh, you foolish Gentiles, who has bewitched you? Who have bewitched you? Who have given you this strange doctrine? So my thought is, who have bewitched you, church, today? Who have bewitched you to make you think that you can receive the benefits of the God walk in the flesh? Who have bewitched you that think that you can receive the benefits of God without the Holy Spirit? Who have bewitched you? In chapter 4, Paul deals with, he talked about the coming of Christ. He said, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. But he don't stop there. He says, he said, but God also sent his son, the spirit of his son, Christ, to live in our hearts. Amen? Amen. To live in our hearts. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready for a word? He says, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. God sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba. Father. In chapter 5, so he gets this contrast between the spirit and the flesh. That's where we're at right now. 
that, that the spirit bring life, but the flesh bring death. And he introduces the holy, the, the fruit of the spirit. But chapter 6, around verse 7 and 8 in Galatians, he says, God is not mocked. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sow it, so it shall weep. If he sow in the flesh, he's going to what? Reap in the flesh. If he sow in the spirit, he's going to what? Reap in the spirit. Amen. Walk in the spirit or die in the flesh. So if you're going to have a successful 2024, you're going to have to watch your step. You're going to have to watch your step. Because Satan had laid some landmines out there for you. Satan had laid some booby traps out there for you. You have to watch your step. In Psalms 119, verse 133, David, King David asked the Lord, said, All of my steps in your word, O Lord, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. King David said in Psalm 37, 23, he said, The steps of a good man are order of the Lord. Steps of a good man are order of the Lord. Somebody say, watch your step. Watch your step. Not only are you going to have to watch your step in 2024, you're going to have to rearrange your walk. Mm, you're going to have to rearrange your walk. The word, he says in Galatians 5, 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you have to rearrange your walk. The word walk is used 300, 390 times in your Bible. 390 times in some variations. The variations is three of them. It's walk, walked, or walking. In the King James, King James you get walkets. Amen. 390 times the word walk is used. Do a study on that word. It's interesting. Dr. Tony Evans says it this way. He said, when scripture talks about walk, it's talking about the conduct of our lives, how we live our lives. That when scripture talks about walk, it's talking about the conduct of our lives. He says that to carry out the desires of the flesh is to live a life based on a central human viewpoint. Dr. Evans goes on to say, to walk in the spirit is to discover God's view on a matter, decide to act on that divine perspective, and depend on the Holy Spirit to empower your obedience. Amen? That's pretty good. To understand what it means to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Hallelujah. Because you understand this, that, that, that every believer, I don't care how spiritual you think you are, how mature you are, but every believer, there's a war between the spirit and the flesh. There's a war always going on between the spirit and the flesh. And unfortunately, for most of us, the flesh is winning. The flesh is always winning. Every time, unfortunately. Now, Paul uses two Greek words here in that text. The word that he used walking in verse 16 is different from the word walking in verse 25. I'm going to show you. Now, I'm not going to try to stumble over the, the pronouncement of the Greek word, but I'm going to tell you what it means. In verse 16, where you say, walk in the spirit, you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It means to go, to go as you step by step, how to live, how to occupy, how to behave. It, 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 that means that. But verse 25, Brother John D, being military, it's a military word he used. It's a military word that he used because he says, if you led of the spirit, then walk in the spirit. The word there, it means to, to walk in formation, rank and file, to walk in order, to walk in someone else's footsteps, to walk by your commander's lead. That's what the word means. Two different words there, amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you tracking with me? Mm. So understand is that, that when, the, when the flesh wins, Satan wins. When the flesh wins, Satan wins. He gets a foothold in your life and in your life situation. When the flesh wins, Satan wins. There's three, well, several things you need to know about the flesh. I'm going to give you a few of them. One thing you need to know about the flesh that in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 29 said that in the presence of God, the flesh gets no glory. In the presence of God, flesh gets no glory. The other thing you need to know about the flesh, the flesh is, the flesh is like a little kid. The flesh is like a little kid in a store full of toys and candy. That's all in the store, Pastor Houston, toys and candy, like toys of us. And that little kid, everything he see, he want to touch it, he want to eat it, he want to take it home and play with it. That's what the flesh is. He want to touch it, he want to eat it, Take it home and play with it. 
I'll bring that back to you later. Think on that thing. That's what the flesh is. Everything the flesh sees it won't. Want to touch it, want to eat it, take it home and play with it. Hallelujah. Are you tracking with me? But Romans 7, you probably got it on, on, on your list of scripture. Romans 7 verse 18 says this. For I know that in me, I know that in me that, that, that is my flesh. As Paul said, in my flesh dwell no good thing. For to will is present with me. I want to do God's will. It's present with me. I want to do it. But how to perform it, that which is good. How to perform that which is good, I find not. He drops down in verse 21 of, of Romans chapter 7. He says that when I will do good, evil is always present with me. Evil is present with me. When I will do good, Brother George, evil is present. But then he's in Romans 7 again, verse 24, 25. Oh, wretched man that I am, who can save me? Or who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Then he jumps up to Romans 8, 1. I love this verse. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There is therefore no condemnation for them that walk after the spirit, the spirit and not the flesh. If you need to go back and read Romans 8. In Romans 8, Paul lays it out, lay it out between the spirit and the flesh. He lay, he, he do a great job laying it out. Walking in the spirit, you're gonna live, the flesh, you're gonna die. But before, before he gets to, because in Romans 8, you got, if God be for us, who can be against us? You got that too. But before he gets to, if God before who can be against us, he deals with the spirit and the flesh. Because if you're not walking in the spirit, you know, tell, I mean, you walk, if you're not walking in the spirit, you tell what's going to happen. Before he gets to all things work together for the good for those that love the Lord, he deals with the spirit and the flesh. Before he gets to who can separate us from the love of God, he deals with the spirit and the flesh. you got to resolve that spirit and flesh issue. Are you tracking with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But he goes on, and I need to read it to you. If you got your Bibles, open it up to Romans 8. Romans 8. I'm going to start at verse, verse 8 to verse 13. Listen to these words. This is Paul, Romans 8, 8 through 13. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's Paul. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit, listen to this, we got to get this. But if the spirit... The spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. <laughs> the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Hmm. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal, mortal bodies by his spirit that what dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors to the flesh. To live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Again, that's not physical death, but that's a spiritual death. Amen? Amen. But if though, but if ye through the spirit modify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So, so again, the flesh cannot please God. The spirit of God dwells in you. The flesh, you're going to die. The spirit, you're going to live. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. The Bible speaks a lot about walking and who you should walk with and how you should walk and what you should walk in. Again, who you walk with, how you should walk and what you walk in. Definitely who you should walk with. The Bible said Enoch walked with God. The Bible said Noah walked with God. Abraham 
walked with God. Isaac walked with God. But Pastor Mickey, it kind of got me because it didn't say Jacob walked with God. It stopped right there. It didn't say Jacob walked with God. You know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Because Jacob was a what? He was a trickster. He, he, he was a con man. It wasn't until God had to change his walk. So he wrestled with God, he, then he began to walk with a limp. And then he started walking with God. After God, do he, don't, don't make God have to make you walk with a limp. You have to wrestle with God. Walk in the spirit or die on your feet. Bless the Lord. Still talking about this. How you should walk, who you should walk with. Moses instructed the people on how to walk in God's way. If you read the book of Leviticus, it speaks on how the priests, the priests, and the people of Israel walk contrary to God's law. If you read Kings, especially Second Kings, in the beginning, when it when introducing the, the bad kings of Israel, when it introduced the bad king of Israel, it, all, it starts out this way: they walked in the way of their father. They walked in the way of their father, and each king was worse than the next. Walking in the way of their father, contrary to God's walk, God's way. Amen. So who you should walk with? Who you should walk with? Psalms 1 says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Bring that Michael 6 up. Michael 6, verse 8. He has showed thee, old man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly to love mercy, to walk humbly with God, who you should walk with. Paul says this way in Ephesians 4.1, Therefore I, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation in which you are called. Because it's like this, Sister Ladoris, it's like this, that that's, a lot of people can talk to talk. They can talk to talk, but can they walk to walk? You can talk to talk, but can you walk to walk? Can you walk what you're talking about? Can you walk in what you're saying? Can you walk in what you believe? You can talk to talk, but can you walk the walk? So let's talk about what you should walk in. Brother Simon, Worship Simon, you remember Ever, Ever Presley, right? Ever Presley say, don't step on my new blade, my, my blue suede shoes. He walked in blue suede shoes. Don't step on my blue suede shoes. There was an old blues singer back in the 60s, R&B. He had a song say, High Heel Sneakers. 1964, John D., you might know, High Heel Sneakers. It went like this. Put on your high heel sneakers. No, no. Put on your red dress, baby, because we're going out tonight. Then you come back. Put on your high heel sneakers because we're going out tonight. But the next line, I want to put, the next line, you say, I'm gonna put on my boxing glove because in case some fool may want to fight. <laughs> put on your red dress, put on your high heel sneaker, but I'm gonna put my boxing glove on because some fool may want to fight. It depends on what you're walking in. What are you walking in? When I was little, God bless my mother. I love my mother. My mother, it's because my mother, I'm saved. She taught her children at an early age about Jesus Christ. Kept us in church. But Sister Becky, we only had two pair of shoes. We're back then, we don't call them our everyday shoes and our Sunday go to meeting shoes. Oh, you got all these shoes in your closet. Back then, only two pair of shoes, your everyday shoes and your Sunday go to meeting shoes. And you better not wear your Sunday shoes on Monday. <laughs> don't wear your Sunday shoes on Monday. And don't even attempt to wear your Monday shoes on Sunday. You're really in trouble. I have a two pair of shoes. My everyday shoes and my Sunday go to meeting shoes. But it's not how big or how small your feet is. Well, I don't know, ladies may say, I can't wear tight shoes now. But it's not, it's not how big or how small your feet is. It, it's, not, it's not the color of your shoes. It's what you're walking in and what you're walking into. Y'all missed that. What you're walking in and what you're walking into. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. So are you walking in, in your fleshly desires for sexual immorality or lustful thinking? Are you walking in your flesh with selfishness, hatred, envy, and jealousy? 
Or you walk in your flesh that will open doors to demonic influences like witchcraft, voodoo, idolatry, and like. The word witchcraft in the Greek is the word used that used for drugs. Drugs. Yeah, or you're walking full of pocket full of drugs. Hmm. Or you're walking in darkness versus living in the light. And that's what the song Barbara's gonna sing, living in the light. Or you're walking in darkness, darkness versus living in the light. Or you're walking in, into some mess, or you're walking through the church doors. Or you're walking into some confusion and frustration or into a place of peace. Watch where you're stepping and what you're walking into and who you're walking with. Amen. I say it again that, 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 that everybody can talk the talk, but can they walk the walk? Amen. Scriptures tell us how to walk. In Ephesians 5, 15 it says, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools. I like that. It says, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Circumspectly meaning to walk carefully to avoid risk. Step by step, direct step. You know where you're going. Amen. Checking each step. So scripture tells us how to walk. It tells us to, that the, can, can you walk in love? Can you walk in truth? Can you walk in the wisdom and knowledge of God? Can you walk in the wisdom and knowledge of God? Can you walk in the wisdom and the knowledge that there is a God? The fool said his heart there's no God. Can you walk in knowledge that there is a God? Can you walk in the light? Can you walk in the spirit? Walk in the spirit or the flesh will take over. Walk in the spirit or the flesh will take over. Walk in the spirit or die in your flesh or die on your feet. So let's shift and talk about the spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit reign now. God, the Spirit is going to show you how to walk in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will. Hmm. See, understand that, that the text, what I love about the text, is not just about walking. The text is more about living. If you really look at it, it's about living. How do you live a Spirit-filled life? That's what the text is about. Amen? How to live a Spirit-filled life. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Spirit that will help you and teach you how to walk in the Spirit. Ephesians 2, 1, 2 says, And you and you has he quickened, who were dead in your trespassing and sin, where in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the powers of the air, the spirit now, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now work in the children of disobedience. Before you got saved, you were walking to the Satan beat. You're walking to Satan drum, the, the beat of Satan drum. You're walking to the beat of Satan drum. You're walking to the to, to beat of Satan rhythm. To the sounds of Satan. That's how you were walking before you got saved. Walking to the beat of Satan drum. But it's the spirit. Bring, 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 I, I didn't give you this one. Don't worry about it. I just put this in the morning. First Peter said this. Well, before I go there, let me say this. Because you got to understand, see, Satan walks also. Satan walks also. It says that he walked to and fro, seeking whom he can devour. That's 1 Peter 5 and 6. He said, now 1 Peter 5 verse 8, be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. That's not on your paper. That's 1 Peter 5 and 8. But Job, y'all remember Job? I won't go to the story of the whole story, but it says it starts right. I'm gonna break verse one through one now, chapter one, verse seven, where I'm pointing to. But it says that the angels of the Lord came to see the Lord, and Satan came too. That was scripture said. It says Satan came too. Is that is up there? Yeah. Then, and the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord. He said, I'm from going what? To and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Oh, don't miss what he's saying there. Satan walks too. I'm going to and fro, back and forth. If I don't get you up here, I'm going to get you back here. I'm going to come up here to make sure that you're still stuck. I'm back here to make sure you don't move up here. He's walking to and fro. You then he said he's walking up and down. Up and down. 
What he's saying, I mean, he don't care how much money you got, how high you get. That's what he's saying. I don't care how high you get. Satan don't care about how much money you got, if he's going to mess with you or not, or how poor you are. To and fro and up and down. Seeking who he can, can devour. So Satan walks too. That's why you need to walk in the spirit. Amen? So you can understand spiritual things, so you can see through spiritual eyes. Amen? So you can see through spiritual eyes. Amen. So let's deal with it. But Jesus. Somebody say, but Jesus. But Jesus, Jesus has given us a gift of power, truth, and strength through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. He, Jesus says in John 16, verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. He jumped down in chapter 14, verse 26. Jesus says, but the comforter, <laughs> but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I say unto you, that's why you need to walk in the spirit, to remember. Remember who you are. Remember that you're a child of God. Remember you're a child of the most high God. That's why you got to walk in the spirit, to remember. To remember who you are. To remember where you're going. That you're on your way to glory. That you're just pilgrim passing through. That these light of fiction do not compare to the glory that awaits me. Remember where you're going. And remember what Jesus said about you. That you're chosen. I have you. You haven't chosen me. I chose you. You got to remember that. Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And he also said, you got to remember that no man can pluck you from my hand. You got to remember that. That's why you got to walk in the spirit to remember. Are you being blessed? That's why you got to walk in the spirit to remember where he brought you from out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is so important to the believer's life. Sometimes we forget or neglect the fact that we have this precious gift of God living inside of us. We forget it sometimes. That we have this precious gift living inside of you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead inside of you. You got power. Power. Wonder working power. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. The Trinity. Hmm. He has so many roles and functions in the life of the believer. He regenerates. He leads. He guides. He seals. That means he preserves you. But I want to focus on three things. Then we're going to wrap this up. I want to focus on the Holy Spirit as the restrainer. The restrainer. Again, just like that little boy, that little child in the toy and kid's store. You without the Holy Spirit. You without the Holy Spirit like that little kid in, in the store. You want to touch it. You want to eat it. You want to take it home and play with it. And then once you start playing with it, you want to cast it to the side. You know what I'm saying. You just without the Holy Spirit, you just like that. In the flesh. Hmm. Without the Holy Spirit, each one of us is capable of doing the most hideous things without the Holy Spirit restraining us. I told somebody before, I used to cuss. I can cuss. I still can, but thank God for the Holy Spirit. He changed my, my voice. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's a restrainer. Restrainer. Hallelujah. Restraining and guiding us to what is true and what is truth. Amen. John 14, 16, and 18, as that restrainer, he said, I will pray the Father that you should give, that he should give you another comforter that he may abide with you. What? Forever. He's a restrainer. He, he's just not, just not off and on. He's forever with you. That's why he's a restrainer. He's always there. He's not on the clock. He don't go to sleep. He's a restrainer. Amen. To even the spirit of truth, whom the world 
cannot receive. This is good stuff here. Whom the world cannot receive because they see him not, neither know him. But you know him. <laughs> but you know him. For he dwells in you and shall be what? In you. For he dwells with you and shall be in you. That's him as a restrainer. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit as a teacher. John 14, 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall what? Teach you all things. All things. That's why you got to walk in the Spirit. Teach you all things. So, so the question to you, what do you need to know? What do you need to know? Or what do you want to know? What do you want to know? Hmm. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask the Father. What do you need to know? You want to know how to be a good husband? The Holy Spirit can teach you. You want to know how to, how to handle your money? The Holy Spirit can teach you. You want to know how to control your lustful desire? The Holy Spirit can teach you. You want to know how to study God's word? The Holy Spirit can teach you. All things pertaining to life, the Holy Spirit teaches. Amen. There's nothing new under the sun. The Holy Spirit can teach you. Walk in the Spirit. Or die on your feet. Blessed be his name. Blessed be his name. We almost there, God. Let me talk to him about as the comforter. The word comforter, the Greek word paraclete, one that come alongside of you. One that come alongside of you. Amen. He says in John 14, 18, I will not leave you comfortless. Amen. He said, I will not leave you comfortless, but he don't stop there. He says, what? I will what? I will come to you. This is just Jesus talking. Jesus said, I will come to you. I won't leave you comfortless. I will come to you if you walk in the spirit. If you allow the Holy, the Holy Ghost to, to work inside of you, I will come to you. But you got to see this. If you got your Bibles, I don't think I laid this out. It may be on your scriptures, but if you go John 14, let's drop down to verse 21. I'm going to read this to you. Oh, man. Y'all been blessed? Yeah. Amen. You going to start walking in the spirit? Yeah. Praise God. My job's done then. John 14, verse 21. He that has my commandments, he keep them. And he, and he it is that love me. And he that love me shall be, shall be loved of my father. I will love him and will manifest. He will manifest himself, manifest himself, manifest himself to you. Amen. And he will manifest himself. I will manifest myself to him. But look at the next verse, Judas. This is Judas, not Judas is scary because he's, 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 he's going to betray the master. Amen. But this is Judas, the, the brother of John or James. He says, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? That got me. How are you going to manifest yourself to us and the world don't see you? The world can't understand spiritual things. How are you going to manifest yourself to us and the world don't see you? Man, that blessed my heart when I read that, Pastor Eutrus. Hey, Amen. That was a good question. How you going to do it, Jesus? Hey, Amen. This is what he says. Verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man love me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him. And look what he says. And we, you see that? And we will come unto him and make our boat. He's a comforter. He said, I will come. We will come. God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit will come to you in a boat with you. Walk in the Spirit. Amen. He's a comforter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 15, 26. But when the comforters come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall what? Testify of me. Hmm. He should testify of me. It's through the Holy Spirit that you can see Jesus and recognize his voice. It's through the Holy Spirit that you can see Jesus and recognize his voice. It's through the Holy Spirit that you know when you are in the presence of God. It's because of the Holy Spirit. It's through the Holy Spirit that you can identify and deflect every trick of the devil. Because of the Holy Spirit. Oh, somebody should clap. Thank I got one clap. It's through the Holy Spirit that you can deflect every trick of the devil. 
You will see it coming because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He's a comforter. Hallelujah. Uh, then he says, it's through the Holy Spirit that you have peace everlasting. Jesus says, it's being that I go away. That's what he said. If I don't go, he can't come. But he says in verse chapter 14, chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus, peace I leave with you. I'm not just going to leave you, but peace I live. I'm not just going to leave you. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit and peace I'm going to leave with you. Peace I leave with you. Not as the world give. Give I unto you. Let not your heart, let, let not your heart be what troubled. Let not your heart be confused. Let not your heart be overwhelmed. Not let your heart be, be, be down. Amen? Amen. Be confused. Peace I give to you. But he said, not only he said not let it be troubled, he said don't be afraid. Don't be afraid what the devil can do to you. Because peace I leave with you. The comfort I give to you. Amen. We just walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Don't you know who you are? Remember what I told you? That greater is he that is in me than him that is in the world. Do you remember what I told you? As I wrap this up. Dr. Amar preached on New Year's Eve morning service about having more in 2024. Remember that? Dr. Omar said more in 2024, and he said more of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You want more of the Holy Spirit in 2024? Yeah. You want more of the Holy Spirit in 2024? Yeah. Then you got to do, you got to do what 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 says, quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. Yeah, you, have to, you need to feed the Spirit just like you feed your flesh to live. You got to feed your Spirit and the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. And you feed it by walking in the spirit. You feed it by living in the spirit. You feed it by feasting on the word of God and practice what you preach. Walk in the spirit. Of the you won't lust after the flesh. When you quench the spirit, the fruit dies. When you quench the spirit, the fruit dies. The fruit, the fruit dies when it's not watered or nourished. And here's the deal. If you have received Christ as Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit. You have a spirit. The spirit of God living inside of you give you access to the Father and the Son. They are one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they one. He said that we will come. So let me tell you again what's inside of you. It says in that latter verse, but the fruit of the Spirit. And no, it says fruit. It's not fruits. It says the fruit of the Spirit is singular, that they work together as one. Just as the Trinity work together as one. That you can't have one without the other. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. You can't have love without joy. You can't have joy without peace. You can't have peace unless you're willing to endure the long-suffering. You can't have goodness without gentleness. You can't have any of it without faith. You can't have meekness but temperance. Temperance means self-control, self-restraint. Temperance means like, it's like a tame horse. It's a tame horse. That's what's inside of you. Amen. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection, affection and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. I wrap with these last three verses. Colossians 2. Pastor Mickey is preaching an awesome, doing an awesome job on Colossians. You hear it on it. He's in this chapter right now, chapter 2 of Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. If you therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Romans 6, 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism to death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of life. Elijah, bring that 56, that Psalm 56, verse 13 up. Let me wrap it up and let me clear that up for you real quick. Psalm 56, verse 13. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. But not thou deliver my feet from falling. That I may walk before God in the light of the living. In other words, your salvation is secure. You're going to heaven. Your name is on the road. Your name is in the book. You're going to heaven. Heaven, your salvation is secure. But what about living on this earth? 
What about while you're still waiting to get to glory? What about your feet? Where your feet at? That's what he said, Lord, help my feet. He have delivered you. He have delivered your feet. Will you not deliver my feet? Your salvation is secure. Your place in heaven is settled. Your name in the book. But here on earth. So if your feet need delivered today, God can do it. If your feet need more, if your feet need to move in a new direction, the Holy Spirit can guide you. If your feet need to be washed, Lord have mercy. Jesus has washed you with his blood. Go ahead, Simon. Salah. Think on that. Think on that. 